Hey viewers, it's Fernando from SkyFi Audio. Um, it's a quiet, quiet Friday morning and uh, it's been a while since we did a shop tour. So I thought I'd walk through the shop. Um, you know, with, with, with COVID still lingering, it's hard to, to come visit. So um, a lot of people have been asking to, to kind of get a tour of what's, what's in the shop lately. So I thought I'd walk through it real quick and, and give you a sense of uh, almost like a virtual visit. Um, the last time we did this was during construction, so uh, it's been quite a, quite a long time. So here it is, uh, SkyFi Audio in Glen Rock, New Jersey. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close the door and give you a quick tour of, uh, of our facilities and what we've accomplished in, in just under two years, quite frankly. Um, so um, it's divided into uh, three sections. We've got three bays here. Um, set up with um, some of our best systems. These are not particularly listening bays. Um, we're not set up for auditions. We're not that kind of shop. We're mostly online uh, vintage audio. So we use these bays mostly for social media, for photography, and to do like demos and for us to enjoy the equipment. So um, we have the great luxury of here. Of, um, we have so much inventory. We're able to kind of curate really neat systems uh, based on either era or genre or finish color. Uh, here's a, a great example. Uh, this is sort of a, a silver setup that we've done. We pulled all the best silver equipment out of our, our inventory. Um, so let me go through the layout uh, of our shop and how we designed it, which is quite, it's been working out really well for us. So our main entrance is, is over there. It's a little door here and you're greeted by uh, an eight channel <laughs> TAC DX8 reel to reel sitting here mostly for decoration at this point. We've got our, our kitchen layout. Bathrooms over there. And this is our packing area. And this is uh, a, a well refined uh, packing process that we've got uh, with essentially all, all our most important tools, right? Right uh, accessible to us. We've got a strapping machine up there, all our labels, uh, tape machine a scale for when we do uh, big pallets and um, most importantly our Instapack machine. This has been a great addition to our our arsenal of, of great packing tools over the last uh, year. Uh, we absolutely love it. It creates these uh, expanding foam bags. Here you can see an example they're about 24 inch bags so we can actually size how much um, expanding foam material we put into each bag and it allows us to nest equipment that you guys purchase into a series of, of high density double ply cardboard boxes that we kind of store up here in our mezzanine. You can see our supply of boxes there. And then we utilize these uh, corners. You can see they're in set. So this is a set of four corners um, so that we can nest one box within the other and um, ship an amplifier as heavy as you know 150 pounds safely, much like Macintosh does. We've learned a lot from them in their packing techniques. You can imagine how difficult it is for Macintosh to pack their super heavy equipment safely and send it around the world. So we've kind of mimicked their packing system and gotten great, great results as of lately. So there's the chemicals for the, for the Instapack machine. It's a part A and a part B um, chemical reaction that creates the expanding foam, much like you would see in a modern home nowadays that they use for insulation. It's a very similar system. So we put a box on here. Uh, we have an integrated scale into our packing table, which is sitting right here. And um, here's the iPad that we use to manage our orders as they come in and out. We've got, we just shipped everything yesterday, Thursday, so there are no orders in the queue right now. Uh, this is ShipStation, a wonderful program to manage. Um, not just the details of packing, but also communicate with our clients so that they know right away when something shipped and when it tracks. So moving on from packing, here we have a, a display of, of uh, a lot of our speakers in stock. What we do is since we don't have a lot of room in the shop, we keep just one speaker out of the pair in the shop. And then we've got storage across the street where we keep the, the matching pair. It's a bit of a hassle when someone comes and they want to see something, we've got to go get the second speaker, but you know, we're mostly an online business, so it's really not that big of a deal. We keep these around to remind us of what we have in inventory and 
when we have the occasional visitor, they can kind of get a sense of what they might be interested in. So moving on, you'll notice our, our Swiss tracks floor. This was an, a wonderful addition to our shop. Uh, we did this on day one. It's an amazing flooring system um, that allows us to kind of mix and match and pick different tiles for different areas. Um, most of you might, will probably know at this point, we're also into cars. So we designed the shop with a flooring system where the middle section here runs the length of the shop from door to door. Uh, it allows us to bring in a car, let's say during a rainy day or a, a snowy day, bring in a car and because these are perforated tiles, whatever moisture or snow is on the car will fall through, settle on the concrete below and then dry naturally, which is uh, working out great. So it's on a really hard surface, so it allows us to kind of like slide things on it pretty easily. I mean, look at that, I can move this pallet just with a nudge, and that helps kind of move things around the shop. And then we transition in here to their diamond plate uh, flooring, which is just as hardy, um, but a, a solid flooring system. And you can see at the entrance, we did a sort of virtual floor mat using the perforated stuff, again, so that when someone walks in with wet feet, um, it settles in the floor. And then in our listening base, we wanted a, a quieter tile, so we bought their um, carpeted tiles. Um, this is a, a good system. It's a little delicate in, in a way. We've had uh, the carpets lift from the tile itself, but with a little care and some double stick tape, you can kind of recover this. Um, so you'll see that all our listening bays are, are lined with carpet tiles. And then uh, moving on, um, in the middle section, we keep sort of things that are coming and going, all our, all the tools that we use to move heavy equipment. We are in the business of moving heavy equipment, that's for sure. Moving on to here is um, it's one of our desks and our photo booth. You probably notice our photography in, in, in our website. This is where that happens. We've got a, a pretty cool LED lighting system that lets us kind of vary color temperature and brightness. Um, so. This is uh, where the photography happens. And no, we don't use actually any fancy cameras. We just actually use our iPhone. Uh, the latest iPhones do a really great job with photography. And since they're integrated into the computer, it kind of makes moving files back and forth really easy. All right, so here's a broad view of our shop. Um, it's divided into metal and wood, and then back there is the electrical area. This is uh, an island that we built at Avention, which is a wonderful T-slot. Um, sort of rector set system. We've, um, we did a, a perforated board on half of it and a solid board on the second half. And you'll see if I move down the row, we've got an integrated saw stop table saw for when we build plinths and bases and cabinets and things like that. So we kind of integrated that into the, into the table. Here you see the saw stop, which is a remarkable saw and under this aluminum plate is uh, also the saw stop, a routing system built right into it. So various uh, projects in different states. Um, some of the things are just waiting for photography. I think we just pictured this guy, this Mac 205. Here's a cabinet from Arantz. A void turntable waiting for us to pick an arm for it. Great turntable. Um, Sonic Frontiers FD2, a DAC that was just restored. Give you a sense of the kind of work we do on here. This is a beautiful DAC. And this is how many parts we actually had to replace on it to get it back to spec and uh, get it reliable enough for a new owner. Um, there's a Luxman integrated amplifier. I think on this guy we're uh, we're just doing some mechanical work to the front flip door that's on it. Here's a shot from a different angle. A couple of things. We've got a microscope over here. This is what we use to inspect uh, stylus on cartridges. It's a great uh, microscope. We've got a vinyl cutting machine or Festool miter saw, sanding machine, drill press, and our pride and joy. This is the Glowforge laser cutter. This thing is amazing. Uh, it's been quite a treat to have this in the shop. It allows us to make really good high precision parts for turntables and tone arms and things like that. 
a little bandsaw, uh, spray booth in case we gotta paint something, and uh, all our supplies are up above, you know, cabinets and, and such. On this side, you'll see some more uh, equipment waiting to get processed. This is sort of like equipment in progress, things that have to be maybe tested and, and photographed. Um, all right, and then moving down uh, to the electrical part of our shop. Well, here's our, our tool sets. This is where we keep all our sort of all tools all organized and, and lined up. And then here is the electrical um, part of the shop. So we've got two electrical benches. Uh, that's where Ben sits, that's where I sit. Um, and uh, they're pretty multifunctional test benches. Uh, we're able to do both repairs and testing on it. Uh, they're similar in configuration, slightly different. Ben's can do uh, balanced uh, connections. Well, mine is, is a little bit more focused on tuners and such. Um, here we have, let's see what's in the works right now. We've got a, a Nakamichi 680ZX. Just did a great video on this uh, unit. It's doing just final calibration at this point. Um, we've got a cello uh, card-based preamp going through uh, final restoration as well. Beautiful two-piece uh, preamp. And then uh, I've done other videos just for the equipment in our workbench, but just to give you a sense of what, what we use on a daily basis. You know, all laid out pretty well and very, very functional. That's my workstation there. And here's a shot of Ben. Ben is restoring a pair of uh, performance to amplifier, some cello. Uh, we've got quite a stack of these, so we're going through them to make sure that they're all functional before they go to the new home. Uh, part storage for all the electrical stuff that we do, and uh, more part storage. This is mostly cartridges and, and connectors and things like that. Uh, here are test leads. We've got quite a few test leads. We have such a variety of equipment that it really requires a, quite an assortment of test leads. And then this is uh, repairs in progress. Let's see, we've got a Kenwood there, a Macintosh MR80 waiting for uh, calibration, audio research, D240 waiting for a relay, uh, which is right here, and uh, NMX 110. Not sure what's that one waiting for a Jadi a DAC that we're working on the power supply, a Yamaha receiver uh, waiting for some bulbs. Let's see, here's a Krell 300 CD waiting for a new laser. Uh, a Shindo waiting for a transformer and uh, some, let's see, some Luxman 3045s waiting for final calibration before they go on the market. All right. Um, you'll notice there's a car lift in the middle of the shop. This is a great addition. We put this in a few months ago and we laid it out so that it is absolutely not in the way. We can walk underneath the car lift Um, without much to do. So we've uh, integrated some great LED strips into it so that when we work on cars, mostly just basic service, we don't do every heavy, heavy work here, but um, it's been a great addition and, and really worked out great. Um, here we have our backyard. Uh, and that room over there is uh, one of our high-end listening rooms. That is really an acoustically treated, very well laid out and thought through uh, listening room. I'll do a separate video on that and show you what's in there. And then that's our one of our shops where we do the metal working. That's where we keep our lathes and sort of the, the finer, noisier metal tools, air compressor or vacuum system, et cetera, is, is in this little remote shed. And let me talk a little about that because that was a great addition as well. We've got a central vacuum system because a lot of you would wonder, how is it that we do messy work next to clean uh, product? And that is, um, we're carefully designed and engineered, you know, dust collection system. Up above, we've got 
the Delta air cleaners throughout the shop that'll filter any airborne particles. And then the entire shop is, is plumbed with a central vacuum system, a really, really um, powerful vacuum system that you can see kind of spread through here. And um, you can see it's actually plumbed to every piece of equipment we've got here. So we can open a valve here, essentially activating the vacuum in the sanding machine. And we can do the same thing for our laser. This guy creates quite a bit of fumes. So it's also plumbed into the system. We can open a valve here and activate that. And if you follow it through, it's connected to our bandsaw and it's also connected to our spray booth. So we can actually paint something right here uh, without emitting very many fumes or, or disturbing anyone in the shop. So that was a really great addition to it. And even our, if you can imagine, both our routers and our sauce top table saw are all plumbed uh, to our vacuum system. All right, moving on to the great wall of sound, the Macintosh wall of sound. This is mostly Macintosh stuff. Um, you see all our vintage tube amps sitting down here below. This is all finished restored product. And um, all the amps and preamps, you know, we've got quite a few tuners, uh, preamps, mostly 70s and 60s here, so some 80s equipment and 90s. So it's kind of naturally been laid out with, uh, from oldest to newest in the back. So let me give you a better shot of that. Quite a bit of product. Uh, up top, we've got some reel-to-reels, some vintage reel-to-reels, um, some new product, new old stock in original boxes, some really rare, rare stuff up there. Is a, a spot over there, a Marantz Model 8 amplifier, brand new in the box. Um, a bunch of other Marantz pieces, some Macintosh pieces. There's a cabinet that's never been opened. Some really cool stuff. Oh, and I don't know if you guys noticed, but those are Sakara Day Sakara tuners, uh, probably one of the largest collections in the country. Uh, I think we've got about 12 or 13 tuners that we acquired from a great collector um, that are in the process of being gone through and then put to market. And I think we've got three or four pieces online already. If you're interested in a Sakara tuner, this is the place to go. You can pick your color, your chassis type, um, the model. There's quite a few differences in models from, from the different Sakaras. So if you're in the market for a tuner, and you can afford a Sakara, that's uh, we're probably the place to go for it. So more to research stuff. Um, SP3 is ready to go out. These three have been restored. It's a wonderful vintage preamp with tone controls, uh, which we love. Uh, there's three of them, slight different variations between the three, but they're all fully restored in a wonderful vintage piece. Uh, we're pretty low on audio research preamps. They sell really well. Um, that rack is usually filled with them, but right now we don't have a lot. All right, let me show you some of the equipment in the central area. Here's the name system. It's a really cool name uh, from the Olive series. Um, we assembled essentially the best of the best. That's the best speaker that they ever made. There's a floating monitor inside of this uh, floor standing cabinet, uh, tri-amplified with an external crossover tuner preamp, CD player, and the modern name rack. This is a wonderful curated system for someone looking for a complete sort of turnkey solution. Um, we've got a four cell air reference turntable here. That's also a wonderful piece that we're uh, restoring. <laughs> There's another Sakara. How do you like that? Some Krell stuff. Let's see, this is our reference cello system. This is by far the best system we've ever had in the shop absolute killer line array speakers able to fill the entire shop with glorious sound um, a stack of uh, four mono blocks here's the third one's missing there that we're just finishing service on cello pellet equalizer this is spectral transport luxman turntable our cd collection amazing reference system um, uh, being sold as a complete system Here's our continuum caliber turntable. This just sold. This is getting packed up. Oh, here's you can get a good sense of what the minus K isolation platform is. That's a highlight of this turntable system. That is the base for that turntable, which is 
uh, going to a new home in Beverly Hills at 400 pounds uh, in that case, plus another 100 and something pounds here. This is a complete turntable system. We did a great video on that if you uh, go back through our history of the last month. And this is the minus K isolation platform, which essentially floats the entire turntable. Super, super cool system. We are gonna get a second one of these in the next week or so. So if you wanted a $80,000 turntable, uh, this is your chance. All right. Um, so moving on to this bay, here's another, here's a Lin uh, active system. Uh, this is the Lin isobaric. These are the bricks. Wonderful British monitor from the late 70s. Isobaric uh, woofers in it. And just like the name system from before, this has uh, three channels of amplification and a built-in crossover, active crossover. Super cool turnkey system. We can match this with a tuner, a CD player, uh, all ready to go for you. Here is our, I just did a video on these speakers. These are JBL 4343s, wonderful, wonderful speakers. We've been after for a long time. And behind it is our Holy Grail reference speaker, not for sale, so don't even ask. Uh, Jadi uh, four-way speakers, crazy, crazy cool. On the cover, stereophile in 1996. Sorry about the, can't get a full shot in there, but you can get a sense of what they're like. And then just some Macintosh stuff. We've got a tube set up on the left and the solid, uh, mix and solid state and tube on the right. Uh, this is uh, just for demo purposes. Let's see, I've got a reel-to-reel -reel there, PR99, fully restored pair of Sakara monitors. Um, oh, let me talk about the house system. See those clips right there? We've got one, two, there's one in that far corner and there's one in that far corner. An amazing addition to our shop. This is what we play while we're working. Um, so these are vintage clip speakers, probably from the 80s, running back to a massive subwoofer in the far corner. Uh, and we actually use Sonos, which is just so convenient, right? Because it's in everybody's computer, so we're able to kind of pipe music throughout the shop while we're working. Now, a lot of times we're testing equipment, so maybe this system will be playing for the day, or maybe that system. After we repair an amplifier or a preamp, we like to run it for, for a day or two. So uh, if we're not running off of the house system, we're probably running a system from one of these bays, uh, trying to test out an amplifier or something of the sorts. Um, Here's a great wall of, uh, I've been trying to organize this a bit better. I was, I was putting together the best from each brand. Uh, here you have a Macintosh 240 tube amplifier fully restored with the legendary C22 preamp. This is a wonderful match for someone looking for a one-two punch. And then I did the same thing from Luxman. Um, I got a 38 FD preamp and a 68 custom tube amplifier. Also the best from there. Is the best amplifier auto research ever made is a d150 super super rare one of a few hundred and on top of it is usually an sp3 that i showed you before and then over here we usually have morant's model 7 and model 8 um, set up but i think those sold recently so they're we've got an empty spot there there's a audio headphone reference amplifier this is an amazing piece as well cool uh four track Decoder reel-to-reel. -reel. It's more of decoration than anything. Um, let me go to bay one. Oh, those are Jardy A45 monoblocks. Uh, there's one there and one there. We actually have uh, three pairs of these, and we're going to do a, a quick setup next week. With uh, we're going to actively equalize these JBLs and hook up uh, four of those Jardy A45s. Here's a Thorns restoration, in-house restoration that we did on a Thorns with a with a stone plinth. This is slate and a, a woody tone arm. It's an absolutely beautiful piece, one of a kind. Outboard power supply, machine feet, you name it. It's a really cool restoration. Um, some VPI, more VPI. Here's a super rare Kenwood L. 07D turntable, not for sale collection, capable of handling two tone arms. Wonderful, wonderful rare piece. Um, here's our oldest record player. It's actually, I guess you could say it's more than a record player, right? Because it's got a speaker on it and it's got amplification or passive amplification. So this is, I guess, an integrated turntable, if you could call it. Uh, early century Edison actually works. 
sounds pretty cool. Um, some more gear, some Krell, past labs, 30.5, wonderful um, class A amplifier, Illuminate speakers, GS series, audio research, that's a matching CD player, a Meridian, Sulu's media player, we just did another video on this unit, you should watch that. Um, quite revealing and, and a really uh, a really unique uh, piece that has an audio uh, place in an audio files world. So um, watch the video on this one. That's a really neat media player. If you're in the market for one, this might be the answer for you, especially if you don't like to mess around with iPhones and iPads and things like that. Uh, highly modified carry audio LP05. I think this sold just yesterday. And then uh, here you see a Nagra 4SJ reel to reel. Rebox B77, there's another B77 just behind it. Bowers 802s, that's one of our best-selling speakers, the early Nautilus series. Uh, here's a VPI, Mark Levinson, number 31 transport, wonderful transport. I think we did a video on that as well. Macintosh 2152, just did a video on that one as well. This is Solutions Integrated Amp. Here's a neat piece of history. This is an active crossover comparison. This came from Mr. Dalquist. Uh, this is, would have been a, an active crossover you would have used back in the day to design uh, internal crossovers for speakers. So this allows you to sort of dial in your crossover frequencies before mass producing the crossover. This is a really neat piece of um, audio history and, uh, and laboratory equipment. All right, and then throughout the shop, we've got taps for electric, for compressed air, for water. So it's a highly engineered and laid out environment and a pleasure to work in. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching. That's a quick tour of our shop. Well, it's 27 minutes, so I guess it's not that quick. Um, please visit us online at skyfiaudio.com where you can see just about everything I've showed you today and probably a lot more. We have tons of stuff that's boxed up and storage uh, ready for a new home skyfiaudio.com. If you like uh, what we're doing, please subscribe to our channel. We're trying to increase our, our video count at this point. So um, yeah, skyfiaudio.com. Thanks for watching viewers and we'll see you soon.